Well, one needs to understand how that started. First of all, if you have a really good mentor and he is building a, a really successful business, all you need to do is just listen to him and do what he tells you. And that's what I did because I didn't know much. And what happens is if you, if you enjoy enough success upon success, and if you do not have people around you that are willing to hold up a mirror to you so you can see who you're becoming, you will become proud. And I became very proud because I enjoyed tremendous success quite quickly in, in the first years of the business. Um, and I, I had to define later on to myself, what is pride? And pride to me is the conversation with self that says that I am better than and you can fill in the gap there with any name. I'm better than. And very quickly after that, pride leads to strife or strife. And striving says that I would like to be better than so and so. So it's a, it's a situation of measuring and seeing that you're better than some, but then coveting the success of others. And that just puts you on the spiral of destruction which I didn't, I didn't see, I didn't see it coming, but God did. And uh, luckily he rescued me there again. He, um, shortly after this business, about seven years in, uh, we started losing a tremendous amount of money, buckets full of money. And it came as such a shock because I'm his blue eyed boy. I'm so successful. What happens? Why all of a sudden all these losses, whatever I worked so hard for over seven years could be gone in a moment. And, I found myself in my garage a year later on my knees, uh, crying out to God to have mercy on me and to rescue me from the situation and repenting of my pride and my arrogance and my striving and building it in my own strength. And he did. He came and he rescued me. Uh, William, it was very shortly after that the situation turned. It was miraculous and it turned. So you could imagine... Uh, the next year, early the next year, I was still very raw and I was covered in the fear of God. And just asking him, how do you want me to build this thing out now? I do not ever want to make the same mistakes again. And I felt God say to me, he wants me to give away. Well, what did I have? I had debt and I had an insolvent company. And, uh, and I asked him if he wants that. But I heard God say the word equity to me, and that's a very interesting word. Now, the the founder of a business always believes that the equity value is hundreds of billions. The balance sheet could show deep zeros, but the founder always believes it's worth more. And I think God went after the very thing that could become a mammon stronghold in my life. That very thing that I believe I'm building something of massive equity value he said he wants that and um, it was very difficult but at the same time i knew this thing is actually really worth a, a minus so i made a deal with god i said okay god i'll give you shares but you got to show me how and i asked him if he how does he feel about 30 percent and he remained quiet and then i gave him 30 and that's where we are. So from 30, very shortly after that, we grew to 51 because I, I immediately saw, I started understanding the benefits of inviting God Almighty, the creator of everything, to have him as a shareholder in your business. The value proposition is just so big. At first, you don't know it. But once I did it, I started realizing what I did. And I realized, but hold on, let's, let's give him controlling stake. And then I can sit back and watch this thing grow. And that's where we are today. Mm -hmm.